Not all bread is created equal. And if you like your soft, fluffy, moist, and delicious, then Hero Bread and Buns should be your first choice. But Hero Bread isn't just about taste and texture. It's high in fiber with ultra-low net carbs with zero grams of sugar. Order today at Hero.co and use the code AH10 to get 10% off your first purchase. That's AH10 at Hero.co. H-E-R-O dot C-O for 10% off your first purchase. This is Naked Kind. Naked Kind. M I P. With Masamela Mark Thompson. Naked Kind. Get woke. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Make It Plain. Another dear friend joining us. We haven't talked to him in some time, but we always do well to get updates from him and all the incredible work that he's doing and especially all the incredible work that media matters continues to do they watch watch fox and they watch right-wing media so you don't have to they keep us informed on all this going on we're going to get into all of that with the president of media matters for america mediamatters.org angelo carasone angelo how are you buddy i'm doing well thanks for having me it's a pleasure to have you back once again first and foremost where are we on unfoxing our cable boxes? How's that campaign going? Well, you know, we had a big, you know, the next round of negotiations will start over the summer. Uh, and you'll see probably some efforts around targeting Verizon and some of the other providers that are up. But something really significant happened last month. Um, the NAACP uh, reached out to the NFL about Unfox my cable box. And the issue there is that, you know, when Fox is negotiating, when Fox News is negotiating these contracts with cable companies, one of the things that they do is say, you know, we want you to pay us X number of dollars more for Fox News. And, you know, they'll obviously fight back. And what Fox does is say, well, we're just going to turn off sports. You like you like football, which is because Fox Sports broadcasts the uh, the NFL. They'll, they'll turn off access to Fox Sports or use that as leverage in order to get higher rates for the NFL, uh, for, for, for Fox News. So what the NAACP did, because the because the NFL was renegotiating their contracts with all these cable, with all these broadcast companies, you know, Disney and Amazon and Fox, is the NAACP contacted the NFL and basically said to them, you know, you're doing this. You shouldn't be negotiating with Fox to begin with. Like They definitely shouldn't be getting the contract. But if they're going to get it, you shouldn't allow Fox. Uh, you shouldn't allow Fox News to leverage the relationship with the NFL, you know, in order to advantage Fox News. And where it all landed, well, ultimately was that you know, obviously there was some pressure and some back and forth there, but it it resulted in you know, it, it, Derek Johnson, who's their president, had tweeted this out that he got some commitments from the NFL commissioner. And now, obviously, this is something one of those things you have to wait and see. But the NFL commissioner made it very clear that. You know, they're not going to allow the NFL, he's not going to allow the NFL to be used as leverage. Uh, I imagine um, uh, to fund racism. I imagine that that's going to, like I said, we're going to follow it. But it's a big step because it means that Fox will have a weakened ability to leverage the NFL. So if you think about that in the context of the campaign, that means when you go to a company like Verizon that's next up on the negotiating dock, they don't have to worry as much about losing access to football or uh, or Fox, or, you know, in this case, it would be, you know, football because the negotiations will run into the fall. So it's a big deal. And it's exactly what's needed to sort of make this work is to take away the pieces of leverage that help prop up Fox news. And I honestly, I don't know what would happen if the NAACP didn't have stepped up and, and did what they did there. It's a, it's a really big deal, you know, uh, honestly, yeah. it is. No, no. And, and you and I talked about that offline. That was an important um, move for them to make. Uh, folks with the subscriber fees that we all pay, even if we don't wa- watch Fox News, it amounts to almost what uh, twenty dollars. Um, uh, what is it a year or twenty dollars a month? What is it? Um, That's right, about about twenty five, twenty bucks a month a year. And next year, if Fox if Fox gets all the increases that they want, everybody will be paying them about forty bucks a year. So they're almost yeah. going to double their the rates, and that means. You know that Fox doesn't have to care about commercials, right? Right. So that's right. that's why oh, Tucker Carlson can lose hundreds of millions of dollars in advertising revenue, and yet Fox can still have 
these massive profit margins. Because the truth is they don't really need ads. Um, they'll have a 90% profit margin even if they had zero commercials. And that's, wow. there's nothing else like that. And that and part of the ways that they've been able to do it is by jacking up their rates, by leveraging these other assets and properties. And nobody else in the industry does to local providers what uh, what, what Fox News does. So it's, it's um, you know, I think now you're gonna see it. This is the real moment for, for, for real leverage. And, and it's sort of a double dip, too. You and I have touched on this before with um, the, the sports contracts they have. They get um, millions of dollars, billions in terms of advertising dollars. The NFL gives them a contract. And as I've said to you, last protest I had out there and, and Roger Goodell is still mad at me about that. We were out there protesting for Kaepernick. But what was interesting, everybody was mad. And then when I said, <laughs> why do you all and the NFL network was broadcasting me saying this? I said, why are you all giving contracts to a network that Trump uses to attack your league when you could just use your own network and broadcast your own games? And you could have heard a rat piss on cotton after I said that. Everybody stopped being <laughs> mad at me. They was look, even the cameraman came from behind the camera and looked. So what did he just say? I mean, when you think about it. So so because I mean, I know that we don't we probably don't have the direct numerical math, but it stands to reason that. Fox Sports is is a part of Fox. So if they wanted to, they could spread some of that largest advertising dollars around in addition to the cable subscriber fees to keep Fox News Channel going. So when we watch Fox Sports folks and those advertising dollars are on there, we, they, they're, they're still getting, I believe, in my theory, in my hypothesis, somewhat of a subsidy in addition to the to the subscriber fees, right? Oh yeah, and when Fox had the NFL, this is before they spun off, I mean, when Fox had the Super Bowl, before part of that got spun off to Disney and everything, but when, when, it, when the Super Bowl was on Fox, that year, in order to buy a Super Bowl commercial, you had to buy a certain amount of ads across all the Fox properties. So even if you, even if you had the money to buy a Super Bowl ad, you still couldn't do it. Yeah. Because the, the condition to make, to buy an ad meant you had to buy a certain amount of allocations which is their way to your point of ensuring that they get this subsidy. It's the same thing. We're gonna see this in a couple of weeks. Fox is gonna make their pitch to advertisers at these upfront events. Um, they've already largely conceded that Fox News is not gonna be able to sell all their ads upfront, which is entirely extraordinary. But one of the things we're already starting to see happen, and this is why it was so important for Fox to close that NFL deal before this major ad season, is that they're selling their ads in blocks. So when you're buying, most ad buyers and, and advertisers now are not just buying Fox News ads, they're buying this, this property-wide ads. And so you're advertising not on shows or networks, you're advertising to audiences, to different segments of the, of the, of the de of demographics, and Fox is gonna kind of distribute them across their, their properties. And that includes digital and Fox News and Fox Sports. And it's a way of sort of diluting the toxicity of say Tucker Carlson uh, when you're making these pitches and also making it clear to advertisers that you right. can't get one without the other. Right, right, right. Why are they still holding on him? I mean, they've gotten rid of other people in the past. He just had a meltdown over the Chauvin trial. People even talking yeah. about that maniacal laugh he has, like something in a horror movie. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what is, why are they still so wedded? I mean, Beck's gone, O'Reilly's gone. Um, what is the their weddedness to Tucker Carlson, Angela? He is uh, he is their future. Well, they can't survive without him. They could survive without mm. Hannity. They could survive without everybody else, but they can't survive without Tucker for for two big reasons. One is that he reaches a, the the next wave, this next the next demographic wave. Uh, his audience skews younger than the other hosts do. They are not na they're not native TV first. You know they're they they're off channel, which means that he can. They, they can invest in digital assets that allow for them to grow. The second is that Tucker will torpedo them with the Trump audience. I mean, they, you know, Fox is relationship with their audience is hanging on by a threat. There's a lot of distrust and discord. Um, they've lost, they've, they've hemorrhaged viewers to Newsmax and also to just, you know, Telegram and online properties. And so part of it is that, you know, if, if all of a sudden they get rid of Tucker, uh that's the that's the final proof you need to show that hey fox is really against us now and that will be the end right you know the audience will fully cannibalize fox news they realize that and the last thing and this is just a rapper and this is the part that really scares me honestly and it should is that lachlan murdoch who's the ceo loves him he just straight loves him 
He agrees with them. He likes them. And so there's something that, that to me is very disturbing about it is that they really believe in Tucker Carlson, at least Lackland does. That, and that is a, a very different kind of future, which is one that is much more ethno-nationalist, much more racist, explicitly yeah. so. I mean, they yeah. are really leaning into that. And that's what they believe. That's their worldview, uh, at least Lackland's. And it's a, it's a much more unsettling uh, direction, to be honest. Um, so it's partly necessity and partly that they're, they're just that villainous now. More MIP after this message. And they want to, I guess, continue to compete with some of the other uh, up and coming right wing sites like One American News Network. They want to compete with it. Is, is One American News Network, are they getting advertising dollars? Are they t- are they're they- not getting advertising dollars. Thankfully, there's no advertising. They have not made any advertising revenue and av- uh, they've not made any revenue in advertising. But the crazy thing about One American News is that they are only picked up by one cable provider. But they are, and how they got this is way too long of a story. But the fact is, they're only on one cable provider: Directv, App, AT and T. Um, and uh, Jesus. but they they get so now they are on only in twenty million households. Almost nobody watches them. They have very very few viewership. They are more profitable than Newsmax is, even though Newsmax is on every single cable co- channel in the country. They are in seventy million households. They are more profitable, and Newsmax has more advertising revenue too. And the reason they're more profitable is because One America News costs more money than Bloomberg does. It's 11 cents a subscriber, which is almost like about a third of what MSNBC gets. Um, and now that deal is about to end and One America News thinks that they can get themselves on every cable channel, but cable provider. I don't think that's the case, but it just goes to show you how powerful those cable contracts are. You know, Glenn Beck gets a penny. He's on, he's on two providers, the blaze. It, it, you know, that's a lot, that's still a lot of money. Uh, you know, when you add it all up, it's millions of dollars, just even if just one penny from all the cable cost providers. So, th- you know, that's where the this is, a, is an issue. They understand the business side of it. So One American News doesn't really have a lot of viewers. Um, they don't, but they get they have great profit margins because they get they have one cable contract, which just is about to expire. And then after that, it's an open question as to whether or not they can survive or not. It, 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 just one other thing on Tucker. So does he and folks, I don't watch it. You I, ladies and gentlemen, I know you don't watch it, so I don't know. So does he have no commercial advertisers now or just what the pillow people and the, and the teddy bear? What, what does he have? What commercial? Yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> does he yeah, even I mean, have he's got, it? He's, he, Fox, Fox News is Tucker Carlson's second biggest advertiser. They buy, they buy up Jesus. almost as much airtime as, as my pillow does on his channel. Buy it. They don't even run promos. They're actually been buying ads to advertise Tucker Carlson's Fox nation show, which is their subscription service. Um, I mean, he just, there's just nobody left. I mean, it is really, it's an incredible thing to look at. It, it is, it's mostly my pillow. There's a couple of stragglers here and there that pop up, but they're mostly just scammy direct response advertisers. Um, you know, he just, he's got nothing left and they will keep him on. And that is, that is the part that's just remarkable is that they, you know, when they fired Glenn Beck, the Fox person who's still there said, you know, he had no advertisers and he's in the industry and he knows, everybody knows that when you don't have advertisers, you don't have a show. That's what they said. And yet right now, Tucker's in the same place. He's in a worse place than Glenn Beck was. And, you know, they keep him out of you know, necessity and a lot of other reasons, but it is, it really is something um, to watch it unfold. And, uh, and it's going to get worse, right? And because there's nothing, it, it's not like there's nothing. It's not like he's going to get better. He's only gotten worse in the time that he's been on the air, even in the last couple, you know, couple months. So um, it really is an amazing thing to look at a, a, cha- a show that has that many viewers just got no advertisers. It's just it really. I, 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 I want to move on, but since you brought up, I, I have to ask this question because everything obviously is moving to um, um, the mobile platforms. Appointment television ultimately is going away. How is their subscription piece going? Is is because because I would imagine it's just again a hypothesis of mine. They've depended on a largely older audience, which is probably less likely to do like the younger generations and go to the mobile platforms. How, yeah. It, I, so I mean, and and everything has a shelf life. I mean, Rush Limbaugh faded before he died. Uh, we got to yep. talk about that too. But but I mean, ultimately, this thing might fade. It's it's got. These other networks nipping at its heels. How, how is that transition to that subscriber base going? Is it is it doing any good for them or what? 
It's not. It's it's been very bad. <laughs> and um, you know, they had a they had a really awesome plan. It, it had a really bumpy start. You know, I think the pandemic, in a way, it radically disrupted their uh, growth strategy. So their plan last year, which was which was effective, the first two times they did it, is that you had to buy subscriptions to the uh, package to get access to these private events, and they were hosting events all over the right. country. So you were showing up, and you could, you know, they had a Fox Nation tent. You go and hang out with Fox News hosts. You like you were part of the team, and so that was an enormous incentive. If you're a Fox News fan. You know, for a stupid subscription that you forget about, you get to go to these parties. Um, it, it was it was a, appealing to people because you bring a couple friends, it's free. You add your credit card, even if fifty percent of those people quit, you still are growing your base really fast. Those the right. first couple of events they did were successful, and then it, after the pandemic, obviously they stopped doing it. There was no special access. They tried to do it online, it didn't work. Um, and then they ran, you know, they've been running a bunch of weird shows. I mean, they have my favorite show right now. And my favorite, I mean, the one to mock is just to show you what the quality of the programming on there is Janine Pirro visiting American castles. And the show is just her walking into people's mansions. I'm not kidding. In the United States. And just saying, look at that tub. Look at those windows. It's the same episode, different house each time. And they produce like 30 episodes. And so it's just Janine Pirro showing up in full form to big people, big mansions, and just in the middle of a pandemic and a man, you know, in this crack, and just a marveling at the tubs and the tiles. It is, I swear it's the same show every time, but it is, you know, and oh, the whole point is Europe has nothing on us because America built all these amazing castles and look at our castles. And, and that's the thing. It's about how America builds better oh castles God. than the rest of the world. And it is, my, and the thing is, a third of the castles that she visits are actually castles that some rich person basically bought from Europe and had moved over stone by stone. So it's not even like they're ours. That's the show. That's like one of their top shows right now, too, to give you a sense of what is on Fox Nation. So it's not like they have a huge draw either. It's that. And that's the show. You know, and it's. Oh, my God. I know. <laughs> I <mean>, that's. <laughs> but, you know, and, and I, I want to move on, but I still can't help it. Wait a minute. And what in the world is this Greg Gutfield show? Is he trying to do a, 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 a nighttime comedy? What is that supposed to be? Yeah, they think it, you know, he, you know, Greg Gutfield got his start on Fox News. He used to have a show at 3 a.m. Right, right, live. right. It was called Red Eye. It, they basically moved him into the 11 o'clock slot. And it's part new. They, they got rid of an hour of news programming. That they, they say news programming to put in Greg Gutfeld. But it is supposed to be, you know, news and comedy mixed together, but it's it's nearly indecipherable. I mean, from the rest of their programming, I think, I, I don't know why they keep investing in this guy, but think about it. He's on the air more than almost anybody else on Fox News now. In fact, he, day by day, there is nobody on Fox News more than Greg Gutfeld. That's how big he is, because he's on a full hour at the five and then a full hour on, at 11. I guess the Fox and Friends people are on in the morning. For the for three hours, so I guess they win. But otherwise, gut felt the zip. Wow, wow, yeah, yeah, and and I mean, the critics have been talking about. I mean, I mean, the bad writing, everything. It's just a, it's just a mess. And of course, they're still themselves. The reaction to the Derek Chauvin trial was characteristic of Fox. Um, yep. I mean, trying to to justify his behavior, trying to be in denial about what really happened that was still rampant on on fox news wasn't it yeah i mean i mean tucker was describing chauvin as being lynched that it wasn't a fair trial you know at the same mm -hmm. time you know so the calculus you know they always have threads right there's one section which is that you know the media and liberals unfairly malign chauvin i mean they literally tucker really made the argument repeatedly that he had been lynched uh, and i don't think it was an accident that he used that description and um, so there's one thing, which is that like, it was sort of a setup. There was a second, which was that, uh, a second strain, which was that independent, that the, the jury outcome, you know, was in question because everyone was reacting to fear that Black Lives Matter was gonna riot. So they didn't have a choice, that Black Lives Matter had made it clear that they were gonna burn everything down if Chauvin didn't go to jail. And so the implication of that, if you're a Fox viewer and you watch them programming a lot, is that we have mob rule now. 
that, you know, it's not just Chauvin that basically they can target anybody. And now the justice system has to capitulate. That was a big thing that, you know, Gutfeld and others had been arguing is that it didn't really matter anymore. You couldn't have an honest conversation about the validity of the trial. Um, and then the third is, you know, the, and they will go to the death on this one because they pushed it so hard, was that you just don't know what killed them, that there were so many drugs in his system. And so it's this sort of doubt idea. Um, and then to put a bow on all of it, because no matter what they all said, they all ultimately concluded that this was a hallmark of American justice, right? This proves that there's no systemic racism. This goes to show you that justice is served. Um, and so there's this strange tension where they want to hold it up as an example to, to discredit the idea that there needs to be any sort of police reform or reckoning with racial justice, especially in our, in our, uh, in our in law enforcement. And yet at the same time, say that the entire verdict is basically either a setup or was the well was poisoned. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the audience just eats it up, you know, that there's no, there's no consistency in the argument that they make, um, that they make it all. And, you know, the only person that has been bizarrely weird on this is, you know, Hannity in particular, uh, it's not that he's been some vanguard, but he is, he has probably said at least 150 times, maybe more, that his critique of what Chauvin did is that he personally, Sean Hannity, can restrain someone with two fingers. And so he doesn't understand why, you know, he needed to kill someone because Hannity could have done it with two fingers. And so his critique is that me, Sean Hannity, I train, you know, with a special combat every day for two hours. I can restrain anybody with two fingers. So the fact that they killed him or that he died in custody is poor training. We need more law enforcement to take the Sean Hannity School of Martial Arts. That's why I say it's weird. Yeah, yeah. it's like well, sort of promoting his new product, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, 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 well. Yeah, they're all weird. They've always been weird. More MIP after this message. So you now, I'm going to give you the honor of uh, having the final word and the eulogy on Rush Limbaugh. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, he, um, he, I mean, he made everything worse. And to me, that's the part that you know, a lot of the eulogies and everything and, and all the write-ups didn't really capture it. Um, and I think in perfect Rush Limbaugh form, form, the very last thing he did on air was to attack Republicans for criticizing what happened on January 6th. He did this on January 7th. He attacked them for opposing violence and said that this is what our founders you know, basically instilled in us, is this is our moment. And you know, I think that he deserves not, there's not a single kind word for him. And I, I do think he was a talented broadcaster, um, which only makes what he did all the more damaging and destructive because he could have been just as capable in a, a lot of other forums because he had the skill to tell stories. Um, but ultimately he was an awful, toxic, destructive force who did nothing but harm intentionally so. And I, I don't think he should get any pass. And I, it is really unsettling that there was even a little bit of good being written right. about him, to be honest. Right. Well, and two, isn't it true that at the moment, the stations that were running his show were just running replays? Um, Still. Yeah, because, I mean, I guess they don't know what to do. But it seems to me, as he was beginning to fade, so does that model. I don't know that people want to listen to somebody run their mouths exclusively for three hours anymore. Um, and, and so hopefully not only is he dead, but that format will ultimately be dead, too. And Lord knows that format, you know, he took over. What he did was take over the talk airwaves across the board so that uh, our side or any other side, for that matter, could not even break in. Advertisers were exclusive to him. If you started a show on another in another format, you couldn't get advertisers. It was just solely him. So hopefully. I mean, the fact that they're still playing replays, how long can that last? Hopefully all of that will go away. I sure hope so. I mean, I think they will last at least a night. I mean, some of the stations are going to run replays for at least the rest of the year um, and maybe more. And, you know, there will be some of the, the ones in the middle markets will start to break off and they'll each go to different people like Dan Bongino will get a show. But Dan Bongino cannot do it. Rush Limbaugh did. Dan Bongino is not good. You know, he's not, you cannot listen to Dan Bongino. Yeah. You just can't listen to him talk for right. three hours. He's not, right. he's not a talented broadcaster. And, right. 
you know, that's going to be the struggle. Um, there's no one to step in to fill that spot. Laura Ingram desperately wanted it. She's not going to get it. Um, it's going to end up getting chopped up. And, and that's, you're, you're right. What he did, and to me, of all the things in his eulogies and all the write-ups, the one thing that was missing, I didn't see in any of them, that I really wish somebody wrote about, was you know the, all they, they all talked about the fact that he built the industry, like you said. But what they didn't talk about was that one of the things that he did do was kill it. Yeah. With the Sandra yeah. Fluck stuff, and but also by by snuffing out and forcing his show onto so many stations, even and wiping out all the local programming, there was no you know talk radio as a format. That's that's the part that really suffered is that yeah. we, it got rid of so many local talkers, and right, right, that right, right. that really was an awesome part of radio and yeah, the yeah. format for a while, and he killed it. Yeah, as a as a former, I, I got my start in local talk radio. And not just Rush, but just national syndication in general. Yeah. Killed local talk radio. And those of you who are not familiar the power of local talk radio, you, you really miss something. Um, and and it, it'd be nice to get to get back to that. There, there's really no substitute for it. Um, there's not. And, and, and Rush was a big part of, of, of killing that off. You know, maybe there's a way to get back to it. Um, I don't know. So... Is the website still up? Unfox my cable box. Can people still go? It is. It's still signing up. And I think you'll see the next action will probably go out in the next couple of weeks as we gear up for Verizon. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, and that will be the next big fight. You know, Fox has been holding off uh, renewals because they wanted the pandemic to lift a little bit and they want the sports right. to start coming back. They wanted to get this right. NFL deal wrapped up. Um, I think, you know, things are now going to get back to where they were. Basically, everything was paused for about a year, at least on Fox's end because they wanted maximum leverage. We're back to where we were. Uh, and I think you'll see everything. Everything is going to pick up steam now in June. This is our moment. This is it. Now, these contracts last for years. So by the to your point earlier, this is the last big round for Fox. And you know, if they get a successful negotiation, they will be secure no matter what happens for the next four or five years. After that, all the transitions in the marketplace and everything, they'll have time to adapt. Uh, and to adapt on their own terms, I'd rather not give them the, the benefit of that. I'd rather make, no. you know, make it hard for them to adapt. No, no, nip it in the bud. Uh, so I just be precise. Unfox my cable box dot org dot com or dot com dot com. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Dot com. Unfox my cable box dot com, folks, to stay informed, stay involved. The president of Media Matters, do check them out. Uh, again, folks, I can't stress enough. The important work Media Matters does. We are all so influenced by the mainstream media and they watch very carefully and give us a break. It's OK to look to me. Whatever you want to look at is fine. But what Media Matters helps you do is give you that. It gives you that third eye to discern what you've seen. And you'll be surprised um, at what they're able to share. Uh, and once you develop that skill, you are able naturally to look at any medium with um, your own discernment and with your own third eye. It, 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 Media Matters gives us all a skill to do that. You'll never be able to look at anything quite the same and think, oh, this is just the story, the end of the story, what I'm getting. There's always more to it. Just like when we go to a restaurant and order food, we want the waiter to get the order right. This is the same thing. Whoever's delivering us news and media, we want them to get the story right. And they don't always do. Um, um, and, new, and with newsrooms contracting, especially during this pandemic, and then right wing media relying more on disinformation, uh, which is you can get out a lot more quickly and create quick content. You got to fill up 24 hour cycle. So that's why you need stupid shows like Run Around in Castles and All Really Castles. All right. So, so that that fills up the content. So so be informed, please. Go to mediamatters.org. Go to un foxmycablebox.com. The president of Media Matters has been our guest, our dear friend Angelo Carasone. Thanks, Angelo. Thanks. Thanks for getting woke and listening to Make It Plain. Please remember to listen, like, and wherever you get your podcasts, please give the show a five-star rating. And please do spread the word. Let's all continue to pray for each other during this pandemic and this police-demic. If all hearts and minds are clear, it has been Made Plain. Nice buns, soft, fluffy, and ultra low net carbs. Discover Hero Bread, the delicious ultra low net carb bread with incredible taste and texture. 
Hero Bread has zero grams of sugar and is under 100 calories per serving. Plus, high in fiber with 5 to 10 grams of protein per serving. Order from Hero.co now and get 10% off your first purchase with promo code AH10. That's 10% off with code AH10. H-E-R-O dot C-O.